But first, is Britain now a third world country? Because that is what one of the Pope's most senior aides thinks. Cardinal, uh, Cardinal Walter Kasper told a German magazine that, and I quote, when you land at Heathrow, you think at times you have landed in a third world country. He then went on to criticise the UK for what he called a new and aggressive atheism, as opposed to a new and aggressive succession of paedophile cover-ups. Uh, anyway, uh, the Vatican was quick to distance itself from his comments and booted Casper off the Pope's UK tour team. So a little bit of a saving for us British taxpayers then. But uh, maybe Casper had a point. I just wish I knew what exactly he was referring to. Because there aren't a lot of words to go on there. Was it Heathrow Airport? Was it staff? <clears throat> the miserable drive into the capital through an industrial wasteland? Or the whole shebang? As I mentioned earlier, last year we dropped out of the UN's top 20 list of the best countries to live in. Tens of thousands of us can't read or write despite a free education system. More than one in five of us, nearly 13 million people, lives in poverty. And poverty definition means effectively having to survive on around £20 a day after rent. In India, the average daily wage is £9. In Thailand, it's £3. And in Nigeria, it's only £2. So we're not quite there yet, Amanda. No. Does the Catholic Church have a PR department? Uh, it's not a very good one. Not at the a moment. very good one. Of course, we're not. I don't think we're a third world country in any stretch of the imagination. But Are we heading towards that? Do you know direction? what I think it is? I don't even think. I don't even think it's it's that. What I think it is, and I'm fiercely passionate and proud of this country, but I think we've lost a sense of pride, community, sense of self. I have a little place in southern Italy. And that is as poor as a church mouse. You know, you drive yeah. down the streets there and it's just littered with rubbish and the, the, the refuse collection doesn't work. Your electricity cuts off when you're halfway through. It, it's, but I love it. And what I love about it is the sense of they're just fantastic people, the Italians. And in that little tiny community, there's a real sense of community there. And I don't think we have it in this country Why, why do you think it's gone? <sighs> I think greed is one thing. I think we're all so desperately trying, we were talking earlier on about ambition, mm -hmm. that everyone wants more, 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 more all the time. And we're never happy with our lot in life. People in the place that I, I live out in Italy, they haven't got a pot to cook mm. pasta in. And, and yet they're happy. Beautifully done. Yeah, phew. <laughs> My mum's watching. And, but they really don't have any money at all. But there's such a wonderful sense of camaraderie and spirit there. And I think it's that, that greed culture that we have, and it's also the benefit culture that we have. We were talking earlier about mm. ambition. Okay, so. okay. I don't know. Steve? Well, I know it's like when you land back in, in uh, Heathrow, it's, it can be a nightmare, you know, and I, I agree with him. I mean, you know, I, last time I came back, W.H. Smith had sold out of L Decoration. They couldn't get the <laughs> froth on my cappuccino. It was an absolute living hell. I thought, where am I? You know, <laughs> am I in Lagos? No, I'm, 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 you know, it's like, I mean, obviously the guy's holidayed in Croydon. No hey, doubt. Easy, <gasps> hey, easy, easy. Yeah? Cheers. Bring it on. Easy. Bring it on. Um, it's, it's nonsense and it's a, it's, a, it's a man who's obviously, you know, a bit flippant with, with his tongue, a bit glib. And, uh, and do you don't, do you don't think, because I think, I think the, 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 perspe the perception of Britain is changing from the outside, looking yeah. in. It's not, look, of course, yeah, it's, it, 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 is, it isn't the country that it probably was 15 years ago in terms of wealth. Which was obviously wealth that wasn't the wealth really is moving ours. East. The wealth it, is moving east. Yeah, now. and it wasn't really our wealth. It was borrowed wealth. And then, as soon as that the the, the, the crash happens, then everyone's left really with nothing. And then, so that's when you start falling off the uh, the radar, and you, you, you're not making the top twenty of, of most desirable places. Do you think we'll bounce back, or is this, is this no for a long time? Sorry to be a harbinger of doom, but I can't see it for a long okay. time. Nick. Well, I think this is a very interesting conversation that we're having, and it's nice that we're debating the worth of our country, but we mustn't forget the fact that this is a deeply ignorant man, and this is completely wrong, what he said. And when he's talking about the third world, firstly, is he talking about the third world that, that's carried out uh, religious-motivated ethnic cleansing? You know, is he talking about that part of the third world? The word third world is, it, it exposes his ignorance because it's the developing world. I've spent a lot of time in, in West Africa, in Nigeria, and what he said here isn't a reference to, uh, to Heathrow Airport or Gatwick or wherever it is. It isn't a reference to this country. It's a reference to his deep-rooted racial hatred. This man has made this comment because he's got off this plane and seen 
Muslims and Jews at an airport. This That's is why he said that. This is he's what I he's, he's seen he's people. He's, of people he, and, he's seen. Yeah. He's seen people. He goes on about how the 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 crux of this is is the uh, he's talking about the the dropping off of church going. Basically, we're in a religious crisis. When you have people as ignorant as that at the head of the church, along with you know with the Pope, who's uh, 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 with his paedophile cover-ups, he wonders why you know there is this this church. You, you, you this is a time where we need people, people that believe in the. Bible, they need to and, and are about to set fire to the Quran. You know, these people need to know they need, they need tolerance, understanding, and wisdom. Not ignorant people that have never been further than their church and, uh, and a little bus trip to somewhere. This man's never been to the third world, he knows nothing. And he makes terms to this country and makes racial slurs. And it gets covered up by their PR company to say, Well, Britain's not as good as it was. Okay. It's nonsense. Okay. So, what do we think? Let's find out, Kirsty. Okay, first we have Peter on line one. Peter, good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, uh, good morning. Uh, you can call me Matthew. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's just an old-fashioned term of respect. Uh, um, well, I was wondering. Yeah. I, my, ex my working experience of the last ten years has been based in the UK and in all of the old uh, EEC original yeah. member seven states, and I have many German, Dutch, Norwegian, and French colleagues. And this is a very common statement yeah. in reference to the quality of life in Britain by all the original Europeans. Wait, so Peter, they Peter, Peter, Peter what, what do you mean by quality of life? Like what coming you... into a third world. This isn't a religious statement. It's a general statement in referring to the quality of life. That but what, what do you mean by Britain quality of life? Is, 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 what do you mean uh, by quality of life? Yeah, that's that's... Example, when I used to try and defend this point, because I used to take it originally as a slur against the British people, it's not meant to be a slur against the British people, but it's more of a statement of fact, as I always get said to me in defence when I argued, was, do you see any Germans, French, Norwegians or Belgics working doing ordinary jobs like decorators, plumbers, car mechanics in Britain? No, but you see many Brits come here because the quality of life is far better. This is the point. So, um, <clears throat> and sadly, it can be misconstrued. And I must emphasise, the last time I ever went to church, I'm not praising, I'm, very, I'm not an atheist, but it was when I was done my, my communion. I'm 56 now. Okay. So I'm not a religious bias. OK, all right, Peter, thank you. I have heard it from other European people as well. OK, uh, we have you... Andrew next on line one. Andrew, good morning. Morning, Matthew. Uh, so, are we uh, third world status? No, not at all. I don't think we know what it is to be poor in this country. And well, if, if we, we are, why do we keep getting people from other countries come and live here and work here? Well, there's they a wouldn't. point. There's a point there. Do you think... Uh, would, you, would you agree that... that uh, we've changed, that perhaps we're not the country we were, or is that uh, not true either? I, I think we have changed. I was born in the 50s, and um, I think now people think they're poor if they don't have the latest things. We, yeah. we were happy as children. We didn't have much. Nobody, you know, really wanted a lot of things. People were happy it's, it's, that they could manage to pay the rent and because this buy is kind, food. Amanda kind of alluded to this straight away with greed. And one of the, one of the areas I've travelled a lot is India. One of the things I can see there is the growth of advertising and marketing has been massive in the last few years, and with it comes dissatisfaction. Yeah. And I can see 10, 15 years down the line a lot more social problems in India as the enormous have-nots, you know, three-quarters of a billion people, look around them and see a growing number of people, the new emerging middle class, thinking, well, why, why haven't I got a bit of that? I want a bit of that. And I can see that spreading. And so it's like uh, someone also said to me the other day, there's not a person in this country under 25 who has any concept, any concept, he says, looking at, uh, uh, at South Cheshire College here, of what life was like before the technology of mobile phones and all the marketing that comes with that. And we, we're, we're basically trained and taught to be dissatisfied with our lot now, aren't we? Hmm. That's a cheery note, eh? Hey! Uh, we'll go to a break. <laughs> Try and sell you some more stuff to make your empty lives complete. <laughs> <laughs>